In our Sunrise Smart Start, U.S. officials say a Russian invasion of Ukraine could happen any day. U.S. troops are moving in position to defend NATO countries and act as a deterrence against Russia. We are joined by Washington correspondent Alexandra Limon, live in D.C. this morning. Alexandra, good morning. So can we expect economic sanctions against Russia before a potential invasion? You know, U.S. officials have been really careful to keep some of that information under wraps. Uh, when it comes to the timing of what sanctions exactly would be deployed when, and that that is because they say it's a strategic move to not, you know, warn Russia ahead of time. But we do know that today President Biden is meeting with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, and the White House says that the two leaders will be discussing what should happen ne next in terms of sanctions or other action to try to prevent Russia from, you know, attacking or invading Ukraine. We know that some of the possibilities that are being considered are, for example, cutting off Russia from conducting trade with the European Union. And we also know that uh, U.S. officials, including the Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally Adeyemo, have warned that if Russia does go further, uh, the U.S. and NATO could try to stop that gas pipeline going from Russia to Germany, and that would have a severe economic impact on Russia. So we know they are considering, you know, a wide range of very serious actions. Well, thank you, Alexander. Definitely something we'll be following closely. And French President Emmanuel Macron will meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin earlier this morning. Well, here locally, many industries are dealing with staffing issues. That includes the Rochester Police Department. Now, reasons range from COVID to stress overload. Eriketa Cost live this morning with more on this and the impact as well. Eriketa, good morning. Good morning. Well, the department is funded for over 700 positions, and right now, currently, there's over 70 vacancies that need to be filled. And on any day-to-day -day basis, there's also absences as well that can range in the single digits to over 50 at a time. Lieutenant Greg Bellow says over the holidays, they had 57 people out at once, mostly due to COVID. A few absences are even officers with long-term COVID effects out with issues from pneumonia and exhaustion. And then there's vacancies, as I mentioned, over 70. But the good news is 22 of those will soon be filled. We're currently in the police training academy. Lieutenant Bellow says recruitment is so important for the future of the department. Certainly a lot of hours starts to wear down on somebody. Uh, one of the things I can say is our injury rate tends to go on the rise. Uh, you're much more likely to get injured your 14th, 15th hour of work versus your first or second hour. Uh, and that adds up, right? Lack of sleep, things along those lines. So that certainly adds up. Our retirements are certainly up. Um, we're, we're struggling. Part of that number is having people retire, right? Part of our shortages is, is related to retirements. And uh, certainly we're trying to do everything we can to keep people here. And he says the job is extremely rewarding, even with the high workload right now. He says he joined this job because of the feeling he gets just helping someone in a life or death situation. The best way to join the department if you're interested is by taking the civil service exam. That's the first step. Lieutenant Bellow says there is an exam coming up in the first week of April. For now in Rochester, Eric Cost, News 8. Eriketa, thank you. Lieutenant Bellow also added some officers have canceled their vacation time to help with the call volume as well. Turning now to a look at our forecast, uh, James, not a bad morning for a morning walk. No, yeah, it was uh, certainly chilly the past few mornings. Uh, it was very pretty. It was nice to see the sun come up in complete blue. I don't think we have all that blue today. But uh, we'll call it uh, kind of a mix of sun and clouds uh, for this morning. 20s and then eventually 30s this afternoon. I'm going to call it mild. We really should be starting in the teens for an early to mid-January day. Next 24 hours, there it is, upper 30s to near 40 today. And I have several other days that uh, even could reach 40 degrees in the 8-day forecast. I'll have that as well as a check at the bus stop uh, coming up in a few minutes. Mark? All right, uh, James, uh, thank you. Let's check the roads with our sunrise traffic. Live look over 390 at the airport, volume uh, building in, but again, everything is on time there at last check, 490, 590, up to speed as well this morning. 
Well, new this morning, a Rochester woman has been reported missing after leaving the state last week. Susan Jean DeCourcy left Rochester back on February 3rd. She was headed to Fort Myers, Florida. Officials say she stopped overnight at a hotel in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, and has not been seen since. Her cell phone last pinged in Newington, Virginia on February 4th. DeCourcy is a type 2 diabetic. She may need medical assistance. She was last seen driving a gray 2015 Ford Escape with New York plates DHM1211. She is 5'4 with brown hair and blue eyes pictured here. If you have any information about where she is, you're asked to contact Greece Police at 585-865-9200. Well, multiple people rescued after their snowmobiles went into the Erie Canal. This happened around 4 o'clock yesterday near Chai Lai Avenue in Gates. Firefighters discovered one of those snowmobiles had gone through the ice and that six others were still trapped on the frozen surface. After being pulled from the canal, one of the riders was taken to the hospital. The others refused treatment. No charges have been announced. Gates police also investigating a fatal crash over the weekend that left one person dead. Officers responded to Chai Lai Avenue and Gates Sunday morning around 3 a.m. Officials say the car left the roadway, striking a utility pole and a parked vehicle in a driveway. A passenger in the car was pronounced dead at the scene. The 26-year-old driver, Torzell McLeod, was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Gates police have charged McLeod with vehicular manslaughter and DWI. Happening today, Kirk Ashton, the former Hilton Elementary School principal accused of sexually abusing multiple students, is due back in court. Ashton has been accused, rather, of abusing over 30 students during his 17-year tenure at Northwood Elementary. He is charged with at least 26 counts of sexual abuse against students ranging from the second to fifth grades. He was released from jail back in October after posting bail for $100,000. Ashton pleaded not guilty to the charges last April. Turning now to the latest on COVID-19, state health officials reporting a 3.52% positivity rate for testing, the lowest that number has been in months. The seven-day rolling average also under 5%. Hospitalizations and ICU admissions due to COVID also down over the past week statewide. Let's get a look at the GRE Morning Business Report. Employers are stepping up hiring in January. According to the Labor Department, the economy grew by 467,000 jobs last month. That was better than expected. It came despite the Omicron variant. Meanwhile, the nation's unemployment rate ticked slightly higher, up to 4%. New York State breaking a record for the highest opening sports betting handle in U.S. history. The betting handle, or total amount of money wagered in a given period, has now totaled over $1.6 billion in just one month. New Jersey previously held the record at $300 million. All right, here's what uh, some folks will be talking about uh, at the water cooler. An historic day for racing fans. And NASCAR hosting its annual preseason clash at the L.A. Coliseum for the first time in the race's history. The 150-lap event is typically held at the Daytona International Speedway. 23 drivers raced on the short track Sunday with Joey Logano taking the checkered flag. All right, one last check now with James. James, it's going to be a pretty uh, calm day, I would say, right? Kind of nice, right? Easy uh, ease into the week here on this uh, Monday. We've got uh, partly cloudy skies right now. Uh, I'm even seeing a little bit of twilight. Sunrise at about 719, uh, but we are seeing some sun right now. Love that, uh, especially over Lake Ontario. Uh, this afternoon, getting into the upper 30s, eight-day forecast. Uh, check this out. Wednesday, maybe a run at 40 degrees. We briefly get above freezing Thursday and Friday, so some Warmer air, certainly, but you know what's never going to go away? Those massive snow piles. Did some shopping this weekend uh, <laughs> by, uh, you know, a lot of the Wegmans parking lots. The mm -hmm. snow piles are stories high at this time. At yeah, this you point. have to be careful pulling out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, James. Thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in about 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day.